this is unbelievable. I mean, you also have people like, you know, from other countries calling and saying what they did a TV drama and this is why people really are taking notice. Like, what exactly happened? So it kind of goes back, it goes back like more than 20 years. And if you think in the UK, we've got a massive network of post offices and um, sort of out in villages, they were often sort of run by men and women who might have a, a small shop with a post office counter. Um, attached. In the late 1990s, they were also using paper ledgers. They were sort of filling their accounts each week, and the government decided to upgrade the system. The government obviously owns the post office um, with some new software, and Fujitsu uh, won the contract. But the problem was, soon after these, um, these new tills were upgraded and, and installed with very little training, they started noticing that money was missing. Sometimes it was just a few pounds, sometimes it was several thousand. And instead of saying, you know, hold on, there might be something wrong with this software, should we investigate? Right. The post office, which has powers of private prosecution, it can, it can, you know, it can send, its, um, send these people to jail, decided that there was this kind of silent crime wave that this new software had unearthed. So what actually happened to the money? The money was it just accounted I mean was it accounted in the wrong way or have we actually found out what was it a software glitch like there were there were bugs in the software so things like um, you know they might be the the, the till would think that you should have eight thousand pounds when really that money was just sort of invented nowhere and the, you know these post office um, workers would dig into their own savings to fill the gap and that money's vanished uh, and Adrian you always find the right words in your column because you start by saying you know you can't watch the drama the TV drama without having a huge sense of rage. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is deeply unfair because there, there were also actually calls for a long time. There were whistleblowers in saying, absolutely. well, this is what happened. Absolutely. This has been going on for, for 20 years, more than 20 years. Um, and it's been an extraordinarily large miscarriage of justice. And the most extraordinary thing about it all is you have a question. Um, do you think that these um, discrepancies in the accounts are the result of a computer going wrong? There have been many, many examples of computer systems going wrong. Or do you think it's an, uh, the result of a sudden outbreak of criminality among these salt-of-the-earth type of people who run local post offices? And the post office came to the conclusion it must be the people to blame. Now, that is an extraordinary conclusion to come to and to stick to year after year after year. So who's to blame, actually, you, you know, in this? I mean, it's amazing that after that, Fujitsu still won other contracts. They have, have they apologized? Like, who, like, what would they do differently now? Ultimately, the senior management is to blame. To some extent, the government is to blame. Um, and to some extent, Fujitsu is to, is to blame. We don't know exactly uh, what was going on, but the, the management took a line that the post workers were to blame, that lies were told. These post workers phoned up the helpline and said, you know, something's going wrong. And they were told over and over again that only you're the only person who's discovered this discrepancy there's no other examples of that that was a direct lie and um, Paula Bennells the woman who uh, was CEO during these crucial years of the post office has returned her, uh, her CBE um, uh, is what widely held to be accountable I think should be held to be accountable um, but I think we need to ask a lot more yep. questions about Fujitsu